All right, so many have been asking in the StreamYard community I've seen about how to create animated overlays, the equivalent of, <clears throat> so like uh, animated video that literally shows up transparently the components of the video as, in fact, people are talking. And with StreamYard, there is no current way to do that if you were just to upload a video clip because that will take over the entire stage or the portion of which you've made the size of your video and it will auto uh, mute your microphones and you cannot continue to interact or do you know talk um, at the same time either and i've seen uh, multiple requests for this and i've come across uh, a solution that's taken some time and it's a combination of many things so i will warn you this is going to be a long video and there are a number of components that are involved in it but given the concept of it you should be able to come up with a solution, I hope. And so one of the things uh, that Gage and Dan often mention that you can actually use animated GIFs and you can actually create transparent animated GIFs so that it won't just completely cover anything that it goes over, just the elements of the graphic. I'll show you an example in just a minute. And a couple things about that, uh, there are limitations. Uh, one is the file size that we're allowed to upload in um, StreamYard as far as overlays are concerned because that's where you would upload an animated GIF is in the overlay section. Uh, that the file size is limited to 3 meg. That's a very small file. And the other thing is when you use transparency with animated GIFs, then your maximum resolution is then 600 by 338 pixels. Put that in perspective, I have the entire show at all times at 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels, compared to 600 to by 338. So knowing those factors going in, a uh, limited file size and much lower resolution, your animated GIF could appear less quality, and in all honesty, it will. Uh, you just have to be the the judge of whether you're okay with that or not and I began looking into this because I wonder I wanted to do is create an effect and I wanted an effect <laughs> with sound and of course an animated gif does not in you know, gifs in general there are there's no sound no sound goes with it it's not like an mp4 or an mov or any other video type file in that regard so I found a uh, audio file that I liked it's about six seconds in duration and I then coupled it with an animation and let's see here let me uh, move over so in this is another brand and it's probably not even showing up in the window let me see if I can get the logo nope here we go so you see this main logo and I had this made by a artist at Fiverr and no problem if you want to know how to get this in by the way the top is chopped off here and that is just because there's a lot, a lot to this, but uh, the position and size of the windows that I'm using, the browsers, are very important as they pertain to how they're being controlled with what I'm using right now is Stream Deck. And many of you are aware of Stream Deck. This is just the, the software view of it. It's an actual physical control panel of buttons. And I do, I control my shows using the fact of a known size and position of various windows along with mouse movements and mouse clicks because there are no, at this very moment, no hotkeys uh, to be integrated with StreamYard. That being said, there's good news there. I was literally contacted by a representative from Hoppin. As you recall, StreamYard was acquired by that company. And I was contacted because they knew I was doing work in the automation area arena, particularly with uh, Stream Deck. I've had several discussions with uh, prominent folks there at StreamYard and so word got to the Hopin developer and we actually had a call together for almost an hour and this individual asked me some very good questions to help them get to that solution of literally having these things connected through uh, hotkeys versus the things I'm using which is much more complicated but I wanted to give you the concept of animated GIFs and how you can make something work. So I'm going to pull back over to the main. This is my main show. The brand of my main show, I should say. 
and um, you know, obviously you can see this is StreamYard, the interface. And I guess the best way to start this off is just to demonstrate the animated GIF and it will have audio to go with it. So I'm gonna to move to a different viewpoint where you're gonna see literally two of me so I can emulate having a guest on the show. So I just pressed one button on Stream Deck and there it is. Multiple mouse clicks occur as a result of that. And what we're going to do is, or what I'm going to do during the show is if a guest drops a bomb of knowledge or uh, wisdom or a uh, smart bomb, I call it, then I will play this nice little effect. And here we go, I'll show it to you in just a minute. Watch, you'll see it coming out of this corner. Three, two, one. And during that time, actually, I didn't demonstrate it, but I could be talking, even though it be, wouldn't come over too well over that whistling sound of the bombs coming down. And that is the effect. One more time for those of you that want to see it again real quick. Let's show it several more times. So we got a cool little effect. And so what I did was I had that logo that we saw on the previous screen. I'll jump back to it. I had it taken apart. Uh, by the artist, the original artist, again, part of it's taken, uh, chopped off here, but I had that uh, artist uh, use the same logo, so I'll have continuity in my brand, because, you know, the Mind Body Business Show is near my show, but my primary product is Carpet Bomb Marketing, and this is literally one of the screenshots I use during an ad spot for my show. So just a little backstory there, and what I've had is this airplane is now all by itself you saw it fly across the screen and then these bombs were all separated and he added words to them and these were per my request and all this other stuff was removed and so he already had the digital files and was able to create this for me so again if you want uh, contact info of that specific Fiverr artist then just give me a shout that's all right I'd love to pay it forward and give the, the gentleman some more business let's come back to and so this is in what I call my side-by-side -side view where I have a guest which would be over here <laughs> if you're looking to the left what focus on the left because <laughs> it's two of me uh, but that would be the guest on your right and then if I have a guest that comes up so here became the, the quandary so now if you look on the right hand side where we have StreamYard I have a transparency selected Oh, that, that was the other thing. Definitely need to mention this. Animated GIFs are by default, they endlessly loop. They loop forever, which means they play, start over and play again. Start over and play again, and they never stop. In StreamYard, the way you do that is literally choose another overlay. And so I put that in my the programming for that button and here's the button and it's going to be an eye chart it's going to be hard to see but I put it in this one and unfortunately uh, for those of you that are on Mac this won't work um, because of this particular plugin it's called Super Macro by Bar Reader they do not support Mac very very limited support unfortunately uh, but anyway so these are some commands that are in there this is i've got a whole training on how to do all of this uh if you want it or need it it's 100 percent free for all Streamyard users uh, it's in a previous post within the Streamyard community group on facebook and so in here what's going to happen is multiple steps occur after just one key press this one in particular that go on so basically it's going to play the video which is right here this is the animated gif right here this blank one it plays that video and then when it's done I put a timer in there and based on knowing how long this animation is after it's over I then have my uh, stream deck macro click on this transparent tile and that literally stops that overlay it switches it stops it dead in its tracks and so it just you work with it till the timing works and that's how I make it so that it will only play one time that being said, for those of you that are tech savvy, know that you can create animated GIFs that loop only one time. And that's what the developer did. That in what I learned through this process is not 100% uh, dependent upon just how the video was created. It's also dependent upon the end result player. In this case, whatever is being used. 
under the hood with StreamYard is still playing it infinitely in a loop. So we still had to come up with a solution. So yeah, I've been through many steps with this, back and forth, especially with the, the artist who developed all this, who knew a lot of this, which was really nice. Um, so we've got that. And uh, then there was another issue. So you, what you see is 100% transparent. We'll do it one more time so you can kind of get an idea. And note that the, you know, the, I do, I am aware that the orange of the plane really bleeds in and it's hard to see. I've asked him to uh, create a black version of the plane and see how that's gonna look. I think it'll look a lot better. But here we go, watch from up here. So you can see as the plane went over, it, it continued to fly as bombs were being dropped and it just kind of disappears into the into the distance. But you notice that everything else was still intact because the only thing I have is a side-by-side, -side, I call it a, a background. And if I were to remove, let's see, I don't know if that will do what I want it to, but probably will. Yeah, so that's the background I have. And then when I add to stream, when uh, I add back to stream, now you see this, and that animated transparent GIF goes and flies over anything that's on the screen, which is pretty phenomenal. Well, then I came up on a, a little spot where I was like, now what I do, and that's when I'm in what I call my guest solo view. So you're gonna see just a view of the one <laughs> on the right. And I just pressed the button. So this would be the guest. Hello. And when the guest is talking, I may wanna throw out that cool transition. And so notice this time, there is a frame all the way around. See that? A nice professional looking graphic frame that I would like to keep there and keep this as pristine as possible. So I found a way to create or use the source file that the individual gave me and create a new animated GIF, this time with this, this uh, frame as a background layer for the entire animation. And so you'll notice, and this is pretty interesting, watch the quality, and we'll do this a couple of times, but watch the quality, let's see if I can point to it, of these letters. Watch the quality of the graphics of the letters and everything. It will degrade a bit because you'll see in a minute here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna press the button. You'll watch it degrade as the airplane and the, the graph or the animation is playing, and then it will restore itself back to its high res that you see right now. So here we go. Three, two, one. Notice the degradation. It's a little blurry. Keep watching, watch the words, and they will clear up there. So that was an interesting dance to perform. Now here's what's happening with that. And we'll come back to the main version here. So what's happening there is that animated GIF, as you recall, is the resolution is only 600 by 338. And what I did was I pulled in the frame, this frame graphic, which is itself a transparent, everything in the middle is transparent. It's a .png. I pulled that into the animated GIF source file, which was again 600 by 338, I used Photoshop and it worked. It just instantly filled the whole uh, stage, I call it, of 600 by 338 because it's the same relative um, proportion and and just uh, saved it and regenerated the .gif. And luckily it came out at the right size, less than uh, three meg. And I had to do a little bit of tweaking with that. I'm not gonna go into the high tech part of this. Uh, but anyway, so now, Basically what happened is if you look to the right, and since I have it on the screen, we can look at it. This is my raw frame. This is what, well, if I take it away, all right, that's just a normal overlay. We're all, we're all used to that. Down here you can see, this is the animated GIF. And you can see the frame is there as well, but that is the lower resolution version. And so it actually degrades it. But what I did in Stream Deck, so I have two different two different uh, actions here. This one is for 100% transparent mode. So the first one that I showed you where there was no frame, it was two of us side by side, the guest mode, and then this one, which is for the frame. So I know because I colored it orange, I kind of, and I have it, it's barely visible there. It may not be at all. It says frame on it. So I know when I'm doing the show, which one to press. 
if I have either myself, which typically I wouldn't use this when I'm on, on the screen by myself, maybe, who knows, when the guest is on by themselves and I have them focused on and they've got some, they're dropping bombs of knowledge, then I'm going to definitely, you know, let the audience know by pressing the appropriate button. Let's do it again right now. And you'll see the, look at the letters. You saw it flash a little bit. Yeah. And you can hear that I'm still talking during all that whole animation. And there it restored itself. So I have the, the uh, macros in Stream Deck timing all of that. And so I know how long this animation is. Once again, once it's over, instead of clicking transparent, and again, this would be a, um, a infinite loop. It would continue to loop forever until I changed the overlay. Uh, to something different and so instead of transparent this time I had my stream deck go and click on frame overlay and so it's subtle most people won't even notice that something's up but those that are astute and are very detail attention to detail will notice and so this is a workaround until you know things get even better uh, StreamYard's a phenomenal tool and I have zero bad to say about it it's phenomenal and uh, so that is that I'm trying to think of what else I had in store Oh uh, yes, that was the actual, how do I get the sound to play at the same time that animated GIF? And how do I get the sound to play so that it's not taking over my entire microphone line? This tool apparently is available through 4Mac. I don't know, you know, I haven't tested it for a Mac, on a Mac. And it's called, I'll bring it onto the screen here on the stage, it's called Morph Vox Pro. And there you see it. And so I have uh, Stream Deck when I have when I fire up everything. Uh, let's see, let's bring that in here. So I have this one called Showtime. You can see it looks like a little Chrome button. Uh, when I tap that button, it opens up two browsers. Uh, there's actually one right above the view. That you're, I have two monitors, one above another. And um, I have both browsers open with specific sizes, exact sizes and positions within my monitor every single time that's why I created this so that I could then know exactly where to position the mouse for all of these actions that I'm doing again without hotkeys this is this was the solution I found and then uh, another thing that it does is it opens automatically this program called Morphox and it it actually comes up looking like this and I also have Stream Deck then go in to click a couple things I click sound effects and then I literally click this volume down to right around here rather than all the way up here because that would be deafening. And this is located way up on the left higher monitor, way up there, and um, normally under normal operations. And so when I, when I tap the button to play that, so either one of these, when I tap the button, what it's going to do is first kick off the animated GIF, and that is one of these two, depending on which button I hit followed by it will go up to the upper left where this is more Fox Pro and it will click this button and that is the audio you've been hearing and you notice I can talk over it and we can still hear it so what more Fox is kind of like an internal software microphone mixer if you will and so it enables you to broadcast both your microphone and system sounds simultaneously uh, most other pieces of software I've tried you can only do one or the other and it was you know you're locked out from talking so the other thing I wanted to make sure of was when I play an effect that if that guest wanted to say something while the animation was going and had more to go and I timed it wrong I didn't want to just completely clobber what they were saying and at least know that they're saying something so I could ask them again and say I am sorry or I kind of um, stepped all over you on that but would you mind repeating what you just said whatever uh, and the other thing is before the show goes live I will be demonstrating this whole uh, feature to the guests so they know uh, I may actually cue them and say oh there's a bomb and then I'll tap the button so they'll know instinctively like oh okay I'm gonna pause and I won't start talking till that's over uh, so you can do stuff like that so this is called Morphox Pro. So just uh, search for that, M-O-R-P-H-V-O-X, and then space Pro. Uh, let's see, for a trial, which I did for several days. 
and I have since per and I have since purchased it. It was uh, thirty nine ninety nine or something. It was forty bucks, uh, so I now have that. But you can see the uh, the line in the microphone is bouncing the whole time I'm talking. So this is taking over now as my microphone for the system. So I the other thing to note is I'll get rid of the stream deck for just a moment, and we won't be able. I'll pull it up so you can see it here. I gotta move around. There it is. There we go. So in your settings in the audio, you want to be sure to set it to what is called Screaming B Audio. And that just happens to be the name of the company that developed this MorphVox Pro software. So Screaming B Media. And that's all you have to do is set your microphone to that. I did some testing. It doesn't seem to in induce any kind of lag or anything that I could see or notice. So that was, a, of course, a good thing. And there you have that. So Morfox Pro is the other key to that. And once you set up the microphone, it, it's like a mixer once again. So Morfox, it's going to go through here and then go to your main microphone line. But again, the, I don't notice any significant time lag. And you can change and mess with the volume. And I literally searched for a, a, a falling, you know, um, carpet bombing. That's what I was looking for, and I got uh, this audio. I don't even recall where I got it from. Uh, .wav file. I used Camtasia to edit it slightly uh, so that the end would just, um, it, it used to end very abruptly and right in the middle of a higher volume, and I wanted it to kind of chill out a little bit toward the end. Uh, and just minimal edit, and then I changed it to a .mp3. Um, those files seem to be a little, for some reason, smaller. I was kind of curious about that uh, let's see so that is it so it's a combination of an animated gif a transparent animated gif with an audio file and if you have something like stream deck this is something you can yourself automate and if you're curious yes that is being offered in the Streamyard community for free the training on how to do all this would basically take you down the path of figuring this one out, the audio and anime gift part, because every bit of the control as a repetition here that I do is through mouse position. You can see I actually have the press to start mouse position uh, thing in there. That's one of the key ingredients on how to make all this work is this shows you where your mouse is on the screen and that way you put that into your macros. It's a long story there, but uh, you can go to carpetbombmarketing.com and there is a section on that. Uh, this is not to advertise it so much, but I am just here to help. Let's see, let's see if I can find real quick, just so you have visual. And this this uh, this training won't be around hopefully much longer, primarily because they have uh, Streamyard is working on this right now. Or, they along with Hoppin. So here it is right here. Uh, it's called Automation Innovation. And this gives you a quick overview of how to, you know, what it's about. And you click Enroll now, you're gonna see a payment form. Don't worry, put in the coupon code right here, all caps. Let's see, am I still on the screen? Yes. All caps, Stream Yard Family, all one word. Stream Yard Family, no spaces. And you'll get instant access to that training if you want it, if you're, if you're curious. Again, you can learn a lot of great things about how to operate Stream Deck as a result of going through that training. It's, again, quite comprehensive. Uh, files are included. The, there's .text files that you can use to then copy and paste to recreate, to tweak in your Stream Deck configuration. So if you have Stream Deck, fantastic. If you don't, I would recommend you get it. Uh, I'm not, I don't have an affiliate uh, link for it or anything. Just recommend you get it. And um, because I, the whole reason I learned from about Stream Deck existence, I didn't know they existed until it's been, goodness, probably over a year ago, where Gage mentioned it on one of their town halls that he had acquired it and was looking at integrating hotkeys with StreamYard. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is this tool? And I went to check it out, and since then I've done many things with it, uh, as you can see. Uh, and then I finally just decided I'm going to figure out how to make this work without the hotkeys. It's been a long time and didn't know how long it was going to be, so I did. And not to pat myself on the back, uh, just to be here to help you as a resource and hopefully you get something from this and or that free training. And um, 
from that point forward, you know, I'm looking forward for the hotkeys. I can't tell you, I'm probably the most excited about it because uh, each and every time I add something, an element. So I added these two elements, carpet bomb, uh, you can see carpet bombing animation, and one is with a border, one is without. Once I added these, that moved everything down on this, this little panel some, and that messed with my positioning for my mouse to click on things. So I went through and reposition put in the new numbers for every single one of those i mean there were a lot of them those buttons you saw earlier i lost my stream deck there it is yeah so many of them all of these on the bottom needed to be updated uh these two are brand new obviously uh go live book yep three all of the every one of these had to be updated and i think that was it so not a ton but oh and this one as well and this one yes so there were quite a few so anyway that's it i uh, hope you found this useful if you have any questions comments uh go ahead and reach out and appreciate you watching i hope that you found this of value all right it's been 20 almost 27 minutes i think it's time to cut it short as you can see i didn't prepare for this i'm not dressed professionally <laughs> uh, but uh, just take action get it done all right Almost time to go get ready for my meeting with my wonderful apprentices. I've got a team that helps out as well. Not in this area, but in other areas. So anyway, go ahead, reach out if you have any questions, and look forward to helping any way I can. All right, take care.